every time I play Super Mario Maker 2, there's always one question that's at the back of my mind. And it doesn't matter if I'm playing easy, normal, expert, super expert, versus hot levels. The question is, who designed this? Now, if you've played Mario Maker, you probably have run into not just one, but multiple levels that make you wonder, how could a human being have created this? Well, today, we are going to make sure that that doesn't happen to us and with our levels. And you might be wondering, raise fire, how exactly are you going to do that? Well, I've got two words for you. Yamamura's Dojo. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a section built into Mario Maker. It is in the game that has lesson after lesson telling you how you, the player, can make a better level. We're going to be going through and looking at every single lesson that Yamamura has for us and taking notes. Once we are done, we should have enough knowledge that we can create a level that everyone can enjoy. One that even John Nintendo himself would be proud of. So with all of that being said, here is my journey to create the best, most technically correct level in Mario Maker history. If you don't know what the Hot Courses tab is, it's a bit of a smorgasbord. It contains random levels that have one like minimum and were made in the last 90 days. That's it. So when you go here, you really don't know what to expect. And so let me just play through a couple of these for you so you can get an idea of why I think these lessons are so important. I mean, there's so much. It, there's so much that just reaches out to me. And I figured we'll start with this one because I saw it had a very short world record. Like, what is this? I don't know why this was created. All right, this one looks like a good course. Let's check it out. All right, so here we have something similar to the last level in that there's not really much going on here, but there's a lot more enemies. And uh, someone created this and they released it into the wild. And I don't really know why. Now, these are very easy. Let's actually filter the hot courses to super expert hot courses. And let's try to find some on the opposite side of the Mario Maker d uh, difficulty spectrum. Bonds? Bonds T. I love Bonds, dude. All right, let's check this one out. I don't know what this is. I don't know what to expect from the Bonds, but we'll give it a look. It looks to me, though, to be... Wait, is this... Is that a... It's a pixel perfect to jump? You have to land perfectly to go in the door. Now, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna waste my time doing this right now. But you get the idea, right? It's either a bunch of nonsense that has no difficulty in it, not even really any any main focus in it, or it has something like this. Obscure tech, pixel perfect jumps, and like a three second level. Now, I, okay, you know, I can't fully say that like all of the levels are like one of those two. There are some good levels out there, but more often than not, every time I boot up the game, I run into multiple of these. If you go to new courses, it's kind of the same thing here. Like, I mean, you get stuff like this. I have not even played the level yet, but it's called the worst course I ever made just based on the title alone. I feel like that would have to go against what Yamamura, our pigeon friend who knows all about level design, would want. So now that we've covered how not to make a level, it's time to learn how to actually make one. Because let's face it, if I tried to boot up the level maker right now, there's about a 99% chance I'd create something exactly like you just saw. Partially because I don't know what I'm doing, but also because I like to do a little bit of trolling from time to time. But today, we are going to become a changed gamer. The plan for this is pretty simple. I'll be watching through all of the level making basics and taking notes along the way. Once we're done, I'll be heading over to the level maker to apply what I've learned and make a level that good old John Nintendo himself would be proud of. So here we are, maker lessons. We've entered into the classroom and today's professor is going to be this pigeon right here, Yama Mura, who apparently has all of the knowledge that we need to create the perfect level. All right, here we go guys, here we go. First day of class, intro to making. Before we start making courses, I should probably explain what a course is. Courses? From where I'm uh, where I'm from, we call them levels. Whoa! A little sass here from the student. Alright, apparently they're- Okay, courses. They are not called levels. A course is, is, is the space that Mario travels across from the starting point all the way to the goal. Okay, interesting. 
Does this guy not know how to use the run button? What's going on here? <laughs> Someone tell this guy how to run. Oh, he's kind of gaming, though. If you can make it all the way to the goal, he'll clear the course. Okay? In short, the course is everything between the start and the goal. Very nice. Guys, you made it through the first lecture. Congratulations. Nice job. Okay, here we go. We're gonna move on. Workflow basics. We're gonna start to get into the nitty-gritty here. This is when things are gonna start coming together. All right, we're gonna make an entire level right now. Here we go. Kawamura? <laughs> what? Whoa, insulting the teacher? Messed up, dude. All right, start with base ground. Add obstacles later. Okay. I started typing in all caps for some reason in my notes, but that's fine. This is a very <laughs> uh, rigid level. Not a lot of hills on this one. Okay, okay. A lot of ground. Good idea, human. <laughs> uh, what? So we're adding in some Koopas, but why are they placing these in these in these locations? I don't know. Okay, okay. Remember this. Think about how you want the player to feel during each moment. On inspiration. Okay, this is this is big. Sometimes making a level can feel overwhelming because there's just so many options. In times like that, it helps you have some type of inspiration for the course you're making. Okay. There you see here is a simple uh, series of platforms for Mario to jump on. So how can we make this more exciting? Okay, place an enemy on the highest platform, then maybe the enemy will drop down to challenge Mario. Okay, interesting. I like this. The single Goomba made uh, the single bleh, the single Goomba made this area slightly more challenging. Did it actually though? Okay, I'm gonna write that down. Single Goomba makes area more challenging. Psh, one Goomba, wake me up when there's a real challenge. You want more enemies, do you? This is where the enemy spam starts, right? Okay, so we have a double stack in the background. Even though she was only talking about Goombas, these guys are here now. Okay, we'll see how this one plays out. Gets the Goomba jump. Oh, unlucky. Oh, is that a house? Nice house. Use recognizable objects to establish a theme. Okay, this is actually, that's actually a good one. I'll give him credit there. What if this house was turned into an enemy hideout? Oh, okay, I like this. So they added a bunch of obstacles to make it seem like a little enemy stronghold, okay? Develop a theme using one type of object. In other words, instead of throwing a disconnected jumble of parts into your level, try using a few parts you like in creative ways. Well, okay, this is where all the Mario Maker level makers go wrong. Clearly they didn't watch the lesson, otherwise they would know better. Okay, no, don't say there's no rules to making a course. There's definitely rules. Don't tell them there's no rules. That's what got us into this. The problem here is that you didn't hit the run button. Okay, man. Way to go, Yamamura. You're giving your students a broken controller. What type of teacher is this? Giving them broken technology? What type of operation are we running here? I thought this was a university. The budget cuts are insane. Yes, I sabotaged your controller for demonstration purposes. Yeah, okay. All right, we'll see what the higher-ups say about this. I'm reporting you to the, uh, the academic, uh, the president of the university. We'll see if you keep your job, all right? I doubt it. Can't be breaking the tech just to prove a point. You could start by buying me a new controller. <laughs> oh yeah, the great solution. Yeah, don't buy new technology. Just make the gap smaller. That's fine. When you come across a problem in your course, try fixing it in multiple ways. Okay, write that down. Oh, okay, new solution. You raise up the ledge so she can jump further. Okay, I like this. We're learning here. Uh, here's an- here's another alternative solution. Maybe give your student a new controller that's not busted. Okay, how about that? See, look, she's even saying it, dude. I don't know, man. I feel like I didn't learn much about the fixing- about fixing mistakes there. I feel like I just learned about how awful that bird is. Okay, there's a path to the goal now. That means our level is finished, right? See, this right here is like 99% of all the levels in Endless Easy. They're like, yeah, I mean, look, the goal's right there. You start right here, that's all you need. In this lesson, we'll be talking about terrain parts. Interesting, okay. Remember to keep in mind how high Mario can jump when designing your course. Okay, remember that. The Goomba isn't exactly a genius. Whoa, toxic. Hey, that's messed up, Nina. You can't say that. Green Koopa turns around. 
No, wait, green. Oh, crap, I'm messing up the notes. I wonder whether green ones and the red ones move differently. Do you think it's cultural or biological? Biological. They're just programmed to move that way, okay? Movement is biological. Oh, no, what a blunder, dude. She's taking damage. Ack. I turned back into small Mario so, so I couldn't break the block. N Nina's agony while entertaining is precisely why it's important to avoid creating areas that trap players. Wow, this person is messed up. This pigeon is messed up, dude. <laughs> wait, wait. When creating your course, don't hesitate to exploit the insatiable greed inherent in all human beings. Okay, all right, good. Write that down. Noted, noted. This is important. Guys, if you are making a Mario Maker level and you are not doing this, your level is wrong. Okay, so remember this. This is important. This will be on the exam. If you place too many coins in your course, they'll lose all their power. You know, inflation and all that. <laughs> True! Since the dawn of time, philosophers, game designers, and seat cushion engineers alike have asked the question, how hard is too hard? <laughs> what? Uh, okay, sure. Look at- look at this, dude. Look. That- No, you know what she's saying? She's saying, I push jump! Dude, I push jump! Come on, this controller is busted! I totally jumped off of that block! Yes, I'm sure it's the controller's fault. Let's just make this area easier. For the controller. <laughs> Dang, dude! This guy's being kind of toxic right now, what? Okay, the only note I wrote down on on difficulty was I push jump. Hopefully that's good enough. Treating the player fairly. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> we do a little trolling here. Troll the player. Noted. I think what we need to do now is we need to create a theme. Mole main character energy. Okay, so we have the mole theme, but what else do we want to do? I like the ones where it's like you're in the overworld and then you, you're running a little bit and then you go in like a pipe or whatever and it's like the mole, like kingdom. And then you get through that and then you come back out after defeating the, the great mole, right? It's got like a little, a little story behind it. In the game of Mario Maker, one of the enemies that you can use is the Monty Mole. And one of the things that was emphasized in the lesson is that we have to base our uh, level off of just a handful of things, so you really have something to focus in on. And so today, we have chosen the Monty Mole. Now, I'm thinking we're gonna do it Super Mario World, because if you do Super Mario World Desert, it creates this, like, little mountain terrain. So I think we're gonna have this, like, big mountain. And you go into the mountain, and that is the, the mole stronghold. And then we have to take out the King Mole and take his money and escape and run off with the gold, okay? It's gonna be a heist, a heist operation. So first things first, what we need to do is we need to get the man of the hour out. Now we might have a few more enemies, but the moles are gonna be the main one. Workflow, start with base ground, add obstacle later. Remember how you want the player to feel in that moment. Very important, remember about the emotions. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is looking nice. Okay, so we're gonna have him like kind of climb up a mountain. Now what I'm thinking is we do like a little a little platforming like this. So I think this is gonna be our descent into the caves. I like this. Okay, so we have a pretty basic little thing here. I think this will be fine to get us started. Now if I reference the notes, one of the things that it mentioned was use recognizable objects to establish a theme, okay? And so here's how we're gonna do that. Semi-solid platform right here. Drag it down. Look at this. The cave entrance. This is it. You might wonder, raise fire, how is this gonna be a mole level? There aren't even any moles in it yet. Guys, it's all up. You gotta remember the basics. The workflow, okay? So we're doing a little thematics right now. We're making it look a little decorative. If I were a mole entry and I was trying to seem very secretive, what what would I look like? Like we do maybe a little rotation and we put it like that. Ooh, this is a good start. I like what we have here. 
Uh, I'm gonna do one more little little thing. I'm gonna make a little secret area over here. And then you, you see that and you're like, what's over here? What could it be? What is it? I'll tell you what it is. It's a juicer. That's what it is. All right, I think we're done with our, our first area, which means it's time to get into the good stuff, guys. This is when the moles will take over. It's mole time. So what I'm thinking what we need to do is we want it to be like levels, right? I'm thinking we go back left and right. Like you go right, left to right, go down, go right to left. And the further down we get, like the more, the deeper into mole territory we get, okay? Okay, so I'm thinking we're good with this first part. This is gonna be a pretty straightforward little section. So let's go ahead and uh, add this in. Uh, yeah, we're gonna put actually something here. But wait, what if we do tier two power up in the block? Fire flower, huge. We got a nice little thing here. This is a good first area. I think in the second area, I'm thinking spikes or cannons. Like that's the normal floor. Now we're gonna go to the, we're gonna go to the next section. And again, we'll do kind of a little curved edge here. Kind of give it a little, a little theming, a little thematics. We could do spike jumps, where there's like a little like spiky sections that you have to try to like make your way through. I'm thinking maybe after we get to this point, there's like a checkpoint flag here too. I think this is a good, good checkpoint moment. Uh, maybe I'll add a few coins to indicate where to jump in case they didn't know somehow. <laughs> in case they didn't know I'm trying to jump like this. I'll even put a few blocks here. So they can have somewhere to land if they want to. How many levels of this do we want to have? I have two, and I'm going to do a third one. I'm thinking four or five would be good, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. Because I don't want the level to be too long, because, you know, we're just trying to show... This is a proof of concept, to show that we've learned stuff. But I'm thinking maybe five is good, because, you know, in Mario games, it's either three or five hits, and I think five is good. So we'll do... We'll, we'll, we'll settle on that. The fifth one will be the boss area. Now, I'm intentionally trying to make everything not, like, super even. It goes against what I'm used to, because I'm kind of a perfectionist, right? I need to kind of want to make it seem natural, like a cave. What I'm feeling for this part is I'm feeling a little... a little mole chaos. So I want to give this guy a gun. Give the mole a gun. Maybe, you know what, we don't need him to have that on his head. It's funny, but I think we want to do this. I think this might be a decent uh, solution. I think giving maybe some platforms for you to stand on makes it a little more fair, so you're not just juking constantly. What am I doing? I don't know how to use this thing, dude. I should have paid attention in class. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna move on to the next part, I think. I'm trying to avoid summer school right now. That's what it is. Okay, we'll do, we'll do some icicles. I like that. It's a good starting point here. So in this section, we're gonna go with an icicle theme, but we can include a little more as well. Maybe, maybe for theming, to show that we're getting deeper in the cave, it's getting a little colder. I think that's fine, but it might be a little easy. Maybe I can add a couple more moles. You know, we'll do like a one... We'll do a tiny mole. Right here. And then it goes to two, and then it goes to three. Okay, that's fine. I think that's good. We're gonna get ready for the, the great mole battle. This is where- this is against the big man. We're gonna be fighting the big man here, okay? I'm going off the rules, guys. The thing is, we have to start with the ground, okay? We did a lesson on workflow, and it says, start with the base ground, then add in obstacles, then add in enemies, and then remember how you want the player to feel in that moment. That was the other one. And so we're gonna have- we're getting into some of the theming here. It's getting further down in the cave. We're getting all icy. So I'm thinking for the boss, I was giving it some thought here. It's gonna be like a mole survival... Like a survival type thing where you just have to stay alive X amount of time. Maybe something on a track where like at the end something happens and you can get out or something. I'm not sure. You drop down here and you're being judged by the mole guardians. <laughs> Did the lesson say to only use Roy for boss fights? This sounds like Roy propaganda if you ask me. I don't know about you. Okay. So let's test to make sure this works. I don't have Giga Roy. I gotta add that though. That's that actually is Roy propaganda. Okay, so we now have our level here with the auto scroll working. Okay, so we go in here and then what? Then what happens? Okay, so this is the boss room right here. Okay. Uh, I'm in the. I don't want to be here with the balls, dude. <laughs> what the heck, dude? What was that? 
Do they have a section on boss fights? That's a good idea. We should check. I gotta check for inspiration. Does the- does the pigeon tell me about the boss fight? Where- where's the boss fight, dude? They don't have it. They don't have a boss fight feature. We're going into uncharted territory. I mean, I- I do have room here to do like a little mechanism off-screen track thing, potentially. I'm gonna do big mole here. Ooh, I see, I see. Well, this is gonna be off-screen. I'm thinking about like doing a survival type thing. This is, uh, not something that the player would see. This is something that would be very, uh, behind the scenes. Yeah, because I'm thinking if I do that, we can do, like, a survival thing with some big moles and small moles and, like, icicles and, like, an like, ice thing. So the track's global, right? So this should be fine now if I drop down here. Pay attention, pay attention. Oh, it worked. Maybe a little long though, so maybe we clean it up. Maybe we clean it up. Also, does that kill someone? What if that ki wait? Does it fall and like kill you, or does that wait? What happens? Wait, wait can he, can I like die from the muncher? <laughs> That'd be kind of funny, dude. Okay, where is it? It's like right here, right? I'll just like stand here. Oh man, I hope I beat the boss. Oh. <laughs> Okay, let's try again, let's try again. This should be the last thing I have to check, and then we're good. Okay, got caught. Okay, so that is functioning. I don't know exactly how, I'm thinking like maybe two pipes either side that dump out some moles from the sides, and you're like trying to survive. That could be good. Uh, I would have to have like a, pl a little platform for people to go to though. No blocks could be the move here, let's see. What does this look like? Oh my god, the, but they're out of control, dude. <laughs> what the heck? These guys are unhinged. <laughs> my god, this is like hard, dude. What the heck? We put one on each side. So you can go to either way. That, that's I think that's fair. I like that. I like that. We'll do that. Okay, and then we're gonna say, Yeah, you defeated the mole man! Or whatever the heck his name is. The the mole... Uh, stronghold thing. How hard is it to camp this? Oh god, it's actually, it's actually pretty hard. Oh, oh my god, dude, the moles were in control. There were so many of them, they were coming for me. What the heck? Okay, I think that's that's a good length. It's not that long. All right, we got our little final duel against the mole army. Uh, nice, good. Okay, we got our little icicles. Yeah, put. I'm gonna make these ones ones that can't kill you. This is just for the aesthetics. I mean, I guess they could, but if you die to that, then <laughs> you know, I can't. I can't help that. If you make it through here, you can save the Yoshman. And then we're gonna do, for the finisher, we're gonna do a little, like, you're coming out of the ground type thing. And then we can, uh, raise this up a little bit. Like that. No, see, I'm going- guys, we're not just making a level, we're making a level using what we learned. And what did- what did the game tell us, okay? It said, don't do that. It said, don't do it. I'm trying to make a- an immersive, fun level following the rules, okay? I'm a rule follower. I am- what do you think I am? Some type of crazy person? Okay, we're coming out of the cave, alright. And then we're gonna have like... A few little guys here, like a- like a bridge thing. And we'll put a- we'll put a little bonus up here if you- if you're sneaking around. Oh yeah, this is it! Look at him! That's some good stuff. You'll love to see that. Okay, we do the bridge. I got rid of my dang pigs, man! What the heck, dude? Giant fish and hidden block or riot. But that's not what the pigeon told me to do, dude! Moment! Moment! I'm gonna submit this for my final exam. We'll see what Yamamura thinks after he has a chance to play it. Uh, but I think we, honestly, in the time that we spent on this level, we, we really came together. We applied the learning that we gathered from our lessons, and I think it's just a well-rounded stage, honestly.